people, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be reading a fan fiction specifically from Boss Fang Stages. Now I did this before, I reacted to um, my own fan fiction that was in high school and also a lot of someone else's fan fiction outside of Roblox. Um, but I wanted to do this for a while, I was actually considering to read this, but I never got a chance because I was a bit horrified of what this may come into. This says here that this fanfiction contains swearing, slash profanity, and this fanfiction contains graphic violence, and I will put a twist to that. Every time if I come across like profanity, then I will play a clip, a randomized clip from Dito Tugboat, and every time I see something violent, I will insert a clip of one of my gameplays of me failing horribly. I actually did like only read like only chapter one of Arc One, and that's it. I didn't read the rest. But just for you guys at the BFS community, I'm just gonna read only one of the champions chapters in Arc Number Two. All right, I got chapter twenty-two up, and here we go. So, Tess, is it? Follow up, extending a hand for a handshake. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Tess said quietly, returning the handshake. The first of the two final assignments before the break has arrived. And so far, all of us pleased with his same quasi and Piazza's comment the night before I had him eager to find out. Your nickname is Blizzard, right? Yes. I mean, yeah, sorry. How long did you... How did you get it? A long story. Not to... Be denied so easily. Follow simply on to a different question. So I heard you were part of a pretty, pretty famous team that graduated from BFS Academy. Famous, huh? Tess responded, seemingly dejectedly. Follow raised an eyebrow. Nothing wrong with being famous, I suppose. Tess replied. I just don't want attention. Bala opened his mouth slightly as if to speak, but quickly closed it soon after. Despite the multitude of questions still wriggling in his mind, he finally figured asking them would do well wow, would do more harm than good. So, what is our mission anyways? Bala asked out of both curiosity and the desire to strike up even a small amount of conversation. We're, he we're headed to a town called Shadelight to help them out with a pest issue they're having. Pest issue? Bala asked. So like cockroaches and rats and stuff like that? Well, if, sh if she's saying small, then I think you gotta think a bit more bigger than that. Death grin ever so slightly. A little bigger than that. Like I said. The pair continued walking in silence for a short while more, until even Bala's previous patience could no longer continue his curiosity. Well, since it seems we'll be walking along for a while, how about we share some stories? Tess glanced at Bala before, before closing her eyes, sighing. Sharing stories was the last thing of her mind at the Moment. But as Super said, she out the at Carlson. Sure, why not? And story time. My hometown is Midgard. In the kingdom of Coral Blocks, the tests began. Some people refer to it as the city of ghosts because it's where the lost souls of Blah, lost souls, Coles, where even the sentimental from as far back as the great war refused to die. I guess you could call my childhood a testament to that mon moniker. My father was an equinox and my mother was a human, so growing up, I never really fit into either of the two groups. Needless to say, I was rather inclusive and quiet, though I like to think I've improved since then. Tess paused for a moment, for a solemn expression that lasts this thing to come one of the content nostalgia. It wasn't all bad though, eventually I found someone who could, who I could share my time with. She wasn't orphan, a long forgotten, not entirely too different from myself all the, all that time, at that time. Perhaps that was why we got along so well. Through our friendship, we brought each other out of the door drums of loneliness and found happiness despite our once hopeless situation. Aww, so sweet. Bala, seeing Tess's 
people smile couldn't help but smile as well. What's her name? She never knew her name, so I made up a nickname for her. Gummy. Tess giggles softly. In hindsight, it's a little silly, but if it sticks for such a long time, then I suppose it was. Well, where is she now? Around two years before I enrolled at BDFS Academy, she was taken by the Orwendians, Tess responded. Her smile faded away. They made a huge deal about it too. They brought the entire fleet to ships as well as a con convoy. I vowed to find her, so I joined BFS Academy to own my mana skills so that I could fight to rescue her if I had to. Fortunately enough, the Orientians didn't mean any harm, so I could still meet with her at my leisure. Well, if that's the case, then why did the Orientians take her? Tess smiled simply. That's a story for another time. We're almost at the village. Okay, bye. <laughs> I think I may have put it the Orientians, maybe like somewhere in, the, in our series or so. But it's been a long time since I've gone back to BFS due to me playing other games and like life and that stuff. Um, but maybe if I go back like sometime, then they could come back to me of what it is. The villagers nestly nestled in the in a forest clearing in a Mild Valley, but despite its remote location, it wasn't too much smaller than the village near BFS Academy. As the duo approached, Ball chuckled to himself. What's so funny? Tess asked. The village name is a bit too ap aptly named. Don't you think? It's a village of Equinoxian and it's called Shadelight. Tess sighed, shaking her head. A mission objective is in that cave at the end of the pass. As the pair approached the cave, Bala could make out the outlines of a stairwell descending deeper underground. Taking a torch off the wall, he asked. What was the cave what was this cave dug out of? Dug out for anything. I think it was an old mine, Tess responded. They had to shut it down because the mine was at risk of a certain new sinkhole in the village. The only reason it got to such an absurd situation was because of the presence of precious minerals. In the rock beneath the village. Yeah, sounds like an accident way to happen. Which is why it's so important for us to get down there and eliminate our target. As the duel reached the bottom of the stairwell, Bala could see what. I mean, Bala could see exactly what has been. The ground beneath the village was hollowed out into an enormous carbon. Wow. With the carbon ceiling furthermore being supported. Only by no more than 10 pillars of stone, gems of all sorts of colors and shapes peeking out of the rockets. And some looked like as if it was a band abandoned in the process of being excavated. It reminds me of this, like, I can't remember, it's like one of those Pokemon Brick Bronze Caves, the Crystal Cave. I can't remember, like, the name of it. It also, like, I'm thinking, like, if you Google images or so, like the Pinterest stuff. Okay, I don't have a Pinterest by the way. That's a lot worse than I imagined. Bala's cover was abruptly cut off by gu guttural roar and the sounding sounds of crumbling stone as they as some colossal as some colossals being smashed through a nearby pillar. Barely dodging the beast's charge, Bala turned to look at exactly what had ignored him, and he's Nearly dropped this torch of fright. Oh, okay. I think this is where stuff gets real. <laughs> and who told you to drop that torch? You're gonna make it worse. Hey, Google Assistant, can you put out a fire with a rock slide? Here's what I found. Um, these are not helpful to me. Thanks. They all give me like newses. What's up? Thanks, Google Assistant. You're very helpful. The monster was easily twice Bala's height. It's well. I mean, I'm gonna question how tall is Bala. This story. I think an average person's height, which is five foot six or so. I don't know. That's my head cannon. <laughs> its two legs were the legs of a bull, as thick as tree trunks. Its torso and arms were human in shape, but seemed to be made of gold. Its head was a bull's head, with a pair of horns, just like two lenses, drooping out of his forehead. In its eyes, 
seem to burn with bright flames. Uh, that's more than just a little bigger, Bala said. This is what I told you, Bala, or like Tess. Backing away from the beast as fast as he could. It's a Manotaur, Tess said. How is she so calm with that huge beast? Most of them have been killed by hunters, and I expect this one was driven into the cave by them as well. No wonder why it's so agitated. That's a cool name and all, but how are we supposed to kill it? Bala shouted as he hid behind a nearby pillar. Bala, you are... Um, you coward. Just step out into the open, they shouted back. Bait towards you. Bait it? Just trust me. Swallowing his bread and trying to best to do the same with his spear, Bala stepped out from his seat for the safety of his pillow, just as the minor chore turned in his direction. With an enraged bellow, the monster brailed out towards the brawl and the free trade. <laughs> as he started impending in the doom, he noticed a single snowflake land upon his nose. Since when did it start to snow in the snow carving? I mean, cave carving. With a great rush of wind, as if it was Bala had teleported into a Frigid waste of cool blocks here. The floor of the cave crackled as a sheet of ice uh, formed upon the ground, and a thick mass miasma of snow faced into existence all around. The monotonous battle cry turned into one confusion as it lost its footing, falling flat against the ice. In a cloud, cry was at last silenced by a landslide icicle piercing his neck like a dart against a dark board. Okay, I last minute found a violence. I am not a Pakwa person. Oh shoot, oh wow. Thanks, robots. Turning to face the direction of which the icicle was launched, Bala said nonetheless other than Tess, with a vortex of snow surrounding her, seemingly hovering about the ground. So that's how you got your nickname, isn't it? I think with the nickname Blizzard, it makes a lot more sense because Tess, we're not talking about the Pokemon trainer Tess in this story. Um, has I'm guessing she has the power of ice, and my theory is that maybe like Baizu, Sol, or Jacob have other powers like elements. Who knows? So I think, well, I am actually surprised that this is written really well. I don't see any Mary Sue bits in it. Well, obviously me not being like the expert fanfiction writer because I don't write fanfictions anymore. Um, I actually like this. So, um, let me know in the comments down below who you want me to read next. Do you want me to read Jacob's next? Do you want me to read Zoro's next? Or do you want me to read Faisu's right next? Um, just comment down below and I will be happy to do another one. And if you're interested in reading this, I will link the fanfiction down below in the description box to so go check it out. And 